Sir Corindon laid the foundation for subsequent heads of the legislature. The size of the legislature grew in response to the need for increased representation of the natives, rising to 32 members in 1950, 61 members in 19, by 1955, and 78 by 1961. The alleged call generally had limited legislative powers as most important decisions came from the British government in Whitehall. The main activity of the LEGCO was making legislation for law and order in the Uganda Protectorate. 100 years later, post independence Uganda has had 10 parliaments that have each made distinct contribution to the evolution of the nation state of Uganda. Notably, the first parliament, 1962-1966, headed by John Bowes Griffin, 1962 and 1963 as well, and Narendra Patel, 1963 to 1966, as well as uh, 1967 to 1971. These operated under the 1967 Republican Constitution, with Mr. Narendra Patel as its head, and were largely transitional parliaments from colonialism to self-rule and with post-colonial law and institutional reform as their main preoccupation. After the 1971-79 period of military rule, devoid of the legislature, the third parliament, the National Consultative Council, under the chairmanship of Professor Edward Rugumayo, came into, into place. But I need to add here that uh, Professor Rugumayo did not complete his tenure in the uh, NCC. So the tenure was completed by the late uh, uh, Alex Waivari. Uh, later, 1980-1985, of course, between 1980 and 1985, we had the leadership of Francis K. Butajira. This parliament laid ground for post-war reconstruction and legislative adaptation from the eight-year military rule that the way the country was governed by decree. After the military intervention of 1985, the fifth parliament, under the leadership of H.E.O. and K. Museveni, was geared at the revival of parliamentary democracy, preoccupied with post-war reconstruction, and notably opening political presentation, special interest groups in 1989. The sixth parliament, headed by James Wapakabulo, 1996-1998, and uh, Francis Ayume, 1998-2001, was instrumental in overhauling the governance fabric and adopting the various laws to the new constitution, which on order established the 1995 constitution. The seventh parliament, 2001-2006, and 2006-2011, were headed by His Excellency Edward K. Sekandi, and the latter was instrumental in the revival of multi-party political dispensation that had been disrupted in 1985. The ninth parliament and the tenth parliaments under my stewardship have been instrumental in consolidating the strides made by the previous parliaments, in addition to voting for greater equity and inclusivity in management of public affairs, as exemplified by the issue of the Certificate of Gender and Equity Compliance as part of the public finance and budgeting fabric of Uganda. Uh, at this point in time, let me commend and laud the aforementioned speakers for a good job well done. These speakers did not work alone. They had other presiding officers, their deputies, who need to be commended. And in no particular order, I commend the Right Honorable Kurubia Seruano, Right Honorable John Nume, Right Honorable Edinasani Visamunyu, Right Honorable Alex Waivale, Right Honorable Haji Moses Chigongo, Right Honorable Joseph Ekemu, Right Honorable George Cosma Sadievo, Right Honorable Betty Okwir, Right Honorable Kadaga, Right Honorable Jacob Bolanya. Recognition of speakers is incomplete. If I do not recognize the leaders of the opposition in the legislature from the advent of independence as follows. Mr. Apollo Milton Obote, Mr. Basil Keva Taringaya, Mr. Alex Otim, Dr. Kawanga Semogirere, Professor Ogenga Latigo, Mr. Nandala Mafavi, Mr. Afula Ogutu, Ms. Unikiza, and today Mrs. Betty Awol Ochan. In the same vein, I wish to commend the work of the Secretary of Parliament, headed by the Clerk to Parliament, beginning with Mr. E. W. Evans, the first Clerk of the Legico, the colonial government, together with his unnamed colleagues, 
who served during that period. For an independence period, I commend the following clerks, Mr. P.H. Pulisino, Mr. Ignatius Varunji, Mr. Edward T. E. Ocho, Mr. Omoni Ojok, Mr. A. M. Tandekwire, and Mr. Jane Chivirige, our present clerk, and all the staff who have served parliament in various capacities. The evolution of the institution of the legislature has witnessed tremendous growth in mandate, size, and impact. From the seven members of the Legislature in 1921 to the current 10th Parliament of Uganda, which has 459 members, whose roles encompass representation, legislation, oversight, and appropriation. The 11th Parliament will commence in May 2021 with 529 members. This exponential rise in the size and mandate of the legislature is testimony of its importance in the body politic of Uganda. In terms of mandate, Article 79 of the 1995 Constitution bestows upon Parliament the mandate of making laws on any matter for the peace, order, development, and good governance of Uganda. This fixes the widened mandate of the legislature beyond just law and order as it was at inception in 1921. The 100-year evolution of the Parliament of Uganda has witnessed various milestones landmark legislations, far-reaching resolutions, general positive impact on the growth and development of the state of Uganda, the same vein of the legislative history has also been rife with challenges. Between 1971 and 1979, Uganda did not have a legislature due to the political realities of the time. A history, however, positive or negative, offers us invaluable lessons on what to uphold and what to avoid. Ordinarily, this would best be reviewed, lived through a elaborate commemoration ceremony. But due to the restrictions occurring due to the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, a fitting commemoration will be scheduled at a later date. Nonetheless, today, the House will consider a, a motion on the centennial milestone of the Parliament of Uganda. It is imperative that the legislature exercise its mandate of legislation, representation, appropriation, and oversight in a manner that furthers the realization of the aspirations of the people. It is in this spirit that this parliament, inter alia, the Human Rights uh, Committee, Gender and Equity, Compliance Requirements in the budgeting process. Parliament should be the bulwark of a more cohesive, progressive, and equitable society. The commemoration of the 100 years accords us an opportunity to reflect on the task ahead of the 11th parliament and subsequent parliaments, especially at a time when society grapples with endemic socioeconomic inequities, rampant human rights violations, rapid population growth, among others. Parliament should ensure that governmental action, resources, and laws are directed towards adequately meeting the ever-increasing needs of the high, quick-growing population, Equal distribution of opportunities and benefits of growth, narrowing the gap between the haves and the have-nots, respect, respect for human and rights, and sustainable conservation of the endangered environment. On our members, I implore you, as legislators, that the creation of a fitting legacy is within our hands, and we should strive to enable the realization of the aspiration of the people we represent. In order to attain this, future parliaments have strategically adopted to rapid advancements in ICT, as ramifications of the workings of the legislature, rapid population growth, and progressive rise in the expectations and needs of the population. Increased regional integration and globalization, and with it, increasing role of parliamentary democracy. Now, members, I wish you all a happy centennial commemoration of the parliament for God and my country. On our members, I would like to also uh, just read to you a short message from the Commonwealth Parliamentary Association in London. They have written to say, on behalf of the Commonwealth Parliamentary Association, this is our Secretary General, Mr. Stephen Twig. I'm right to congratulate the Parliament of Uganda on a significant milestone in celebrating 100 years of legislation on 23rd March 2021. We know that the precursor of the present day Parliament of Uganda was the Legislative Council, EGCO, and held its first meeting on Wednesday, 23rd March 1921, at Government House in Entebbe. That anniversary falls in the same year that the CPA reaches its 110th anniversary, 1911-2021. The CPA Uganda branch was formed in 1962, and since then the Parliament of Uganda has played an active role in the association, including hosting the 13th Commonwealth Parliamentary Association 
1967 and the 64th Communist Parliamentary Conference in 2019 that you hosted the CPA president from uh, the 3rd CPC, the 64th CPC. The Uganda branch also hosted the CPA International Executive Committee meetings, media meetings in Uganda. Members of Parliament of Uganda have played a significant role in the governance of the association. For example, in 2012, Ona Okupa MP from the Parliament of Uganda represented the CP Africa region on the CP Executive Committee. Madam Speaker, we also thank you for your work during your tenure as the Commonwealth Women Parliamentarians Chairperson between 2013 and 2016, and previously as CWP Vice Chair and CWP Chair Africa region for the significant progress that was made for the CWP network during that time. Parliament of Uganda continues to uphold the values of the Commonwealth Parliamentary Association and to make the CPA recommended benchmarks for democratic uh, legislatures. We very much look forward to the future engagement and collaboration with the CPA Uganda branch. Stephen Trigg, Secretary General, Commonwealth Parliamentary Association. Thank you very much, honourable members.